Ladies and gentlemen, boys and people who earn 70 cents to the dollar of boys, welcome to episode 136 or 7 of the Spears Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Uh, I'm the longest comedian in the country, and uh, I'm here to tell you that I fucking hate velvet, dude. I'm sitting on this velvet couch. Who, in- who invented velvet? Huh? Can someone, can someone actually, I can't even fucking speak, you know, is anyone else like that with, with velvet or like shit where you like touch stuff and then you start to get a lisp? Like, like, it's, I'm, 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 I have to move. I can't sit on this couch to the podcast. I can't believe that I'm that. Sorry. Is anybody else like, oh, now the thing's too low. Ugh. Guys, I'm going to start this again. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Can anyone else, like, not deal with velvet at all? I can't. I can't fucking handle velvet in any way, shape, or form. I can't touch it. I can barely even look at it. It's, but it's so bad that, like... Does anyone else deal with that where they... It's like they touch a thing and they just start to get, like, a lift? <laughs> that happens to me for some reason. If I, think, if I think about velvet or, like, nails on a chalkboard, I start getting shivers inside my body and I start to get to talk with a, with a lift. Is that fucking weird? I think that's fucking weird. But anyway, guys, uh, I'm having a good time. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice Sunday today. Uh, I was going to do the podcast yesterday, but then Frenchie was doing a show in Melbourne and he wanted me to open uh, as a little surprise guest. So, of course, I had to do that for my boy. Uh, so, big thanks to Frenchie and everyone who came out to his show at the Comics Lounge. That was a fun night. Uh, that was good to do. I love. Uh, that was actually the first time I've, I've ever been... Uh, a surprise guest myself. I've had heaps of guests at, at my show. I love having openers and and bringing out people from from the state that I'm going to because I think it's awesome for the audience and it makes the show better. But I've never actually been that myself, so it was cool, man. It was cool to get on stage to a whole bunch of oh shit, that guy. It was cool. Oh, I've I've heard his name twice. What a mad dog. And uh, Frenchie's crowd are always fun. They're always a bunch of loose units. So that was a good show. Uh, I think Frenchie's still on tour. He's only halfway through. So check him out uh, if you want to see the show. It's, it's, a, it's a good laugh. Um, but yeah, man. I've, I've been having a good week. Dude, I, you know what? I'm just like... I said, to, I said to my girl yesterday, last night. I just feel great. Like, I just... I feel like now the tour is over and the special is out. I just feel fucking great. Like, I don't have anything to do. You know, like I feel, I feel like, I don't know, it's, it's, I feel like possibilities are endless and all I want to do is just go back to, to really enjoying every aspect of it. Because I'm not going to lie guys, I fucking hated uh, the the admin side of the comedy special and the tour. All of that business shit, I'm good at it, but it's not fun when you do it for that long without the payoff like you know, postponing the tour 18 months, I felt like, who, who the fuck am I? Am I even doing comedy or am I just sending emails and doing phone calls? Like, I felt like fucking weird like that. But now it's all that shit is done and, and, and uh, we're just getting somebody else to handle next year's tour and that's being booked currently, right now. How efficient is that? I'm not touching it. I'm like, whatever, someone else can fucking do it. It's the best, dude. Retain my independence, make someone else do the shit. And just work on videos. So it's, it's been really good, man. I feel like I'm really getting back to zero where I just have nothing to do other than make videos and shit. So uh, the two vlogs, I'm probably going to try and get one up on Sunday or Monday. So tonight or tomorrow. And then uh, uh, I've got the last one, which will come out on Thursday, which is Melbourne. Uh, and then the week after that. So really next week, Lou Review comes back and I've got a fucking banger to return with. Uh, and they have all these other other video ideas and everything. I've just been in the warehouse every day last week, just making shit. And uh, let me tell you guys, I got some good shit coming. And 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 the plan is, and I really think I can stick to it this time for for fucking once. Just once I start these Lou reviews, it doesn't stop until the tour. So like a whole fucking year of a video every week, sometimes twice a week. That's the goal. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm really excited for it. I think it's gonna be good. But. We need to talk about something very serious, dude. All right, Bunnings. Bunnings, if you don't know, if you're not Australian, Bunnings is like the biggest hardware store uh, in Australia. It's just like a giant fucking warehouse full of tools and nails and fucking mouth breathers. 
<laughs> who are buying tools and nails, you know, that place. I, I pretty much grew up in Bunny because my dad's a builder. So I was always there just running around going, ah, oh, fucking look at that big tool. That's pretty big, isn't it? That's sick. I'm nine. Right? I grew up in Bunnings. And, and every every time you go to Bunnings, right? Every time you go to Bunnings, if you're Australian, what you do is you go and they have a sausage sizzle out the front. And it's like a charity sausage sizzle and it supports like a surfers club or a, or a fucking youth thing or just whatever, right? It supports something, yeah? And here's the thing. A sausage sizzle. I found out that a sausage sizzle in Australia, apparently that's weird, right? In other countries, you get a hot dog, which is like a, a, a hot dog, which is basic. Can we all just agree that a hot dog is like, America ruins all kinds of food, right? A hot dog shouldn't exist. We have sausages. Why do we also have hot dogs? Yeah? Like a sausage is like, I used to work in a butcher. A sausage is great. It's just like ground up meat put inside an intestine, right? Great. Yum. That's awesome. That's like nice and natural. It just works. Whereas a hot dog, I'm going to Google it. What is a hot dog? I'm going to search common hot dog ingredients. Let's have a look at this, right? Hot dog ingredients. (laughs) Meat trimmings and fat, e.g. mechanically separated meat, pink slime, meat slurry, flavorings and preservatives. So it's not fucking food, is it, right? Whereas, I'm going to search common sausage ingredients. Let's have a look at this. Am I just going to be proven wrong? Uh, Oh no. Spices. Meat. That's it, right? So it's fucking real, right? A hot dog is basically just like... There's a burger and then there's a Big Mac, right? Big Mac burger... Sausage hot dog. That's what it is. Apparently, other countries don't have sausage sizzles. It's a very Australian thing. Ever since I put a video up about it, all these people are going, Oh, what the fuck is a sausage sizzle? Is this a hot dog? No, dude. It's not. It's a sausage fucking sizzle. And if I look at velvet, right? If I look at the velvet couch, I won't be able to say sausage sizzle. (laughs) I don't know if that's a mental illness or just a quirk that I have. Although, really... If you walked in to like the psychologist and he's like, uh, sir, you've been hallucinating and you have schizophrenic. And if the guy went, look, I don't know if I'm a schizophrenic or if that's just a quirk that I have. <laughs> I feel like that's not a good excuse, right? I'm mentally disabled. So anyway, you go to, you go to Bunnings, right? And uh, you, get a so- you get a sausage. And it's what a sausage is, a sausage sizzle is, is a piece of bread, sausage on top, onion on top of that, and some sauce if you want it, Okay. But some guy, some 65-year-old dude slipped on an onion in Bunnings, fell on his ass, and then he sued Bunnings, won a bunch of money, and now Bunnings have gone, okay, well, now our new policy is that the onion, to make it safe, has to go underneath the sausage. And that's not okay, all right? That's, uh, that's against, that's a war crime, all right? The onion goes on top. You know Why? Because the onion is a topping, and a topping goes on top, right? So I've started this movement, put the onion back on the fucking sausage, don't put it underneath, alright? And here's my other thing, I realized this when I was at Bunnings, I went to the Bunnings, my local, I went to me local Bunnings, that's the most Australian thing you'll ever hear. I went to me local Bunnings, the only thing more Australian than that is, I went down the local bottle and King hit a 19 year old and now he's dead. That's the, that's the only more Australian sentence than me local Bunnings, alright? It's King hitting a 19 year old and killing them. That's the most Australian sentence ever, okay? Um, the third most Australian thing to say is, g'day cunts. <laughs> um... What am I saying? Yeah, so I went to the fucking Bunnings and I got this thing and they put the onions underneath the sausage and... Well, now the the sausage is on top. What if someone slips on a sausage? Alright, what are we going to have to do then? Are we then going to have to put the sausage underneath the bread? And then the onion underneath that? And then that just means you're getting an upside, upside down sausage says all the onions are going to end up on top again. We're back at square one. Someone's going to die, okay? Dude, I feel like 
all of these like safety precautions that we're taking are just to protect people who, hey, maybe if they were gone, you know, we'd we'd be better off. That's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that we should kill people who would slip on onions. I'm just saying that maybe we shouldn't protect them. You know? I feel like if some guy was going to slip on an onion and die, that's probably just how he was meant to go. Uh, you wouldn't put it on his gravestone. Like, slipped on an onion, died, what a brave man. Like, you wouldn't put it on a gravestone like you would with a soldier who served his country. But you you would kind of, like, you'd remember it as, like, oh, yeah, Jono, Jono died slipping on an onion. And I, and I feel like that was a very Jono thing to do. And I, it, I, I will say that it is sad that Jono is gone, but I'm also saying there's less people on the train. <laughs> and there's less traffic on the roads. And uh, I can actually sit on the beach without being surrounded by too many families. So it's kind of good, you know? It's not good that he's dead. I'm just saying I enjoy the beach a lot more. I think that maybe we just should stop protecting people who would get killed by a vegetable. That's all I'm saying. If you're going to die because you slipped on his vegetable, he was 65. Maybe he lived a good life, you know? Do we really need to protect him? He then said in an article, right? Obviously, lawyers had worded him up, this guy that slipped on the onion and then sued Bunnings. He said that the next time he went into the Bunnings, he had a panic attack. Because he was remembering the traumatizing onion slip. Alright? Hey. Hey, dude. If you slip on an onion. Or if you slip on anything, right? No one's ever had a panic attack remembering a slip. You're just trying to get paid out, dude. One time, I tried to do a cartwheel. And this is when I was like 14 years old. One time, I tried to do a cartwheel. And I didn't realize how hard it was. This is when I was like growing into my body. Have you ever seen a have you ever seen a puppy? You know how quickly dogs grow? Like they grow fast that like what what they do is they grow dogs grow so fast that they grow faster than their brain can keep up with. So it's like they grow and then their brain gets used to how their size that they are then. But by the time they get used to that size, they've grown again. So they're like walking around trying to control a body that's like too big than what they remember. That was like me in high school, right? (laughs) I was just growing way too fast. So by the time I got used to my body, hey, I've got a new one and I'm even longer, right? I feel like only now when I've stopped growing for about four years. I'm only 24. I I kind of only stopped growing at like 20, 21. Right? So I've only been this size for three years. Now I'm starting to learn how to catch shit. (laughs) I'm like, oh, that's how you do it, right? Because before, when I was growing so quickly, someone would throw a ball at me. I'd reach out and be like, oh, fuck, I thought my hands were this long. But they were actually that long. So I would just be in the wrong spot. You know, only just recently I worked out how to run. Luke pointed it out. Because Luke Kidgel, he's he's a runner, right? He's a really good runner. Or he used to be anyway. Um, and he he pointed out when we were doing like a running race thing for the radio. Just a stupid idea. He pointed out that I don't actually run. I just jog really fast. And that fucking blew my mind. Because he was correct. Like I never... I, I didn't run. Because I didn't realize how like... Like, I know my legs are really long, but I didn't know how far you're supposed to stretch your legs when you're actually running. Because, like, jogging, you know, you're stretching your legs a little bit further than when you do when you walk, but not by much. But running, you're, like, fucking stretching them out. Like, if you look at an Olympic sprinter, like, uh, what's the dude's name? Fucking, the kind who did the Optus ads. Usain Bolt, right? That dude, right? The Optus ad guy. If you actually watch him run and you look at his legs, it doesn't look like he's going that fast. Do you know what I mean? Like, because of how far he's stretching his legs out, if you just zoomed in on him and just watched his body, it doesn't look like he's moving that fast, but he is because of the amount of distance that he's traveling because of how long his legs are and how long he's stretching them out. I didn't realize that, that that's how you ran. 
I just like jogged fast. But then Luke was like, oh, you're not actually running. You're just jogging fast. And then I started stretching my legs out and kicking my legs up as well and back. And I was like, I, and I got like three times faster. I only worked out how to run last year. So I'm learning so much about my body. What, why am I talking about this? What was I saying? I can't even remember. I was talking about Bunnings onions and now I'm talking about my legs. <laughs> but hey guys, that's the Speared Sundays podcast. A fucking idiot just starts talking, loses where he is and then can't get back. <laughs> what was I saying? Sausages, hot dogs, Bunnings, people should, shouldn't be killed but maybe we should let them die. And then I got on to talking about dogs for some reason. And now I'm here. I'm so lost. Guys, I'm just going to change the subject. (laughs) I'm so fucking lost. Oh, here's the thing. Hey, guys, if you see me out in public, you can say hello. That's fine. I love that. Love that. That's great. Say hi, get a photo, have a chat, whatever. Right? What I don't like. This is what I don't like. Okay? I was at a shopping center with my girl. Or this happens wherever I am, right? And someone... This happens everywhere I go. Whenever I'm in public and then I look at my Snapchat and I open up my messages like an hour later. You know, because I'm not on my phone all the time when I'm in fucking public, right? I'll get a message from someone like... uh, I don't know. So I was at a shopping center with my girl and then I got... uh, We got some food. I got like... uh, a coffee, right? So, and then I opened my phone after I had left, and then there's this message on my phone that goes, Hey man, enjoying the coffee? I get those messages all the time. Hey dude, how's uh, this restaurant? Or, hey man, how's this shop? Hey dude, enjoying walking down this street? Hey man, how's Collins Street? I always get those messages like you're following me. And if you think those messages freak me out, they don't. They just make you look like a fucking loser who doesn't have the confidence to say hello. Like, what do you think actually happens when I get that message? Right? One, it relies on me opening my Snapchat messages 24-7 the minute after you send them. No, I don't, because Snapchat sucks, and I reckon out of the thousand messages I get every day, one of them might be worth reading, but for some reason, I read them all. (laughs) Right? So, so one, it requires me to be checking my messages fucking 24-7 all the time, no matter what I'm doing, right? So this is what they must think happens, right? I'm sitting at this fucking thing with my girl, Talking to her, but also I'm on my phone, right? And I open up the message and it reads, Hey man, enjoying muffin break? And then I read that and I go, I'm being watched. Oh no, I have a... Like, what do you think actually happens? Like, that freaks me out? (laughs) No. I read those messages three hours after I've already left that place. And I go, oh, another one of these fucking losers. And then I close it. Hey man... Enjoying the comic book store? Hey man, you're too much of a pussy to say hello, so you sent me a message. And you think that I'm just as much of a pussy as you, so it would freak me out. (laughs) Nah man, you're just a loser with shit banter. That's what that is. That message is, I have bad social skills. (laughs) Hey man. I've got bad social skills. And I look around and go, it's one of my fans. (laughs) (laughs) I hate that shit. But dude, there's this, there's this guy speaking in the shopping center, right? There's this, at at the local, the local place that, uh, I go, me and my girl go to, there's this guy in, uh, in Gloria Jeans, and uh, she always goes there. I don't like going there, right? Because I don't like the guy's voice. I just don't like the dude's voice. 
Because there's this guy, right? <laughs> there's this dude. And he's at the Gloria Jeans. And he obviously owns the place. He's like this little Asian dude. And every time he serves me, I get creeped out. Because his voice is like, Hello, how you going? Hello. Uh, would you like Would you like a coffee? And, and, he only, and he only talks like this. And it's always very quiet and, and very weird pitch. And it sounds like he's speaking to me as if he was waiting outside my, my window. And every time he talks to me, I can't, I can't stop thinking about how fucking weird his voice is. And it might sound like this is a racist thing, but if you actually listen to how I'm talking, he doesn't have an accent. He just talks in this tone and this volume. So it's not a racist thing. It's this dude having a fucking weird voice, regardless of where he was born. And when he talks to me like this, I can't help but think every time I talk to him. And this is why I cannot order coffee from this man. Because every time he serves me and he says, hello, what would you like? And then I hear him interact with his employees and he goes, could you help me with this? Could you help me with that? Can you make this order while I make this sandwich? Every time I hear him speak. I can't help but imagine what he sounds like when he fucks his wife. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, baby, do you like that? <laughs> yeah, baby, do you like that? <laughs> Like that when daddy fucks you like this. <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't even do it. Oh man. Okay. Let me get into character here. Yeah, baby, do you like it when daddy fucks you like this? You like that, don't you? Huh? Yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's just the type of person that I am. Whenever I encounter someone with a fucking weird voice, I can't help but imagine what they would sound like having sex. You know, like every time, every time there's a dude with a stutter, I just think, yeah, to take it. <laughs> or someone with Tourette's making like sincere, sweet love. I love you more than anything. This is perfect. I couldn't think of- I WANNA FUCK YOUR FRIEND! Oh, no, 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 that's the Tourette's. That's not a real thought that I have. She's really hot! But I love you. <laughs> Chicken! <laughs> dude, imagine if the dude had Tourette's and he was fucking. Oh, yeah. I don't know why he's, like, so dominant in bed either. That's just how I imagine this dude. It's like, he's really, like... He's really like meek and unassuming when he works at the cafe, but when he comes home, he chucks on the leather, gets out the whip, and he's like, You have been a very naughty girl. <laughs> <laughs> and you must be punished. <laughs> but imagine if this dude was also a dominatrix, right? Get down on your knees. And he had Tourette's. Get down on your knees. It's time for you to be punished. Because you've been misbehaving. <laughs> because you've been misbehaving. And now you must be... You must be punished. I'm a little girl! You must be punished. Oh shit, that's the funniest shit I've ever thought of in my life. Oh man. Oh shit. 
I'm so glad that I got lost and forgot what I was talking about because I got to get to that guy fucking his wife with Tourette's. And that was, I was, I think we all agree, that was a very funny bit for a minute there. Oh, shit. Alright, what are we talking about here? Um, okay. Oh, dude, that, that's what I wanted to talk about. Right, I forgot. That's where I was. I've got it in my notes here. Fucking, I went to Bunnings, right? And, uh, this, this, the, the onion thing was bad enough, yeah? The onion thing's fucking whatever. They gave me this sausage, they put onions underneath. Who cares? I put them on top, I filmed a little video, put it on my Instagram. That was funny, okay? Nice little stupid thing. But then, I went into Bunnings to get some fans because it's summer in Australia, so I need fans for the fucking warehouse so that my editor doesn't die um, of heat stroke while he's trying to edit video clips of, of a small Asian man with Tourette's fucking his wife, bondage style, right? Because that's an important... How fucked is that that that's a job? Right? <laughs> Anyway, so I go to the Bunnies and I buy some fans, okay? And then I get to the, they have, they have self-serve checkouts at Bunnings, which, yeah, you know what, fuck this self-serve checkout shit, alright? Uh, what are you even doing? Stores are just like, yeah man, fuck ya. Welcome to Bunnings, fuck you. We're not doing anything, not helping you. Hey, you want to find a specific type of nail? Welcome to the 3,000 square meter warehouse with no signs. Good luck. We don't help you. I feel like maybe that's why Maybe that's why the dude slipped on an onion for revenge because he couldn't find his fucking nails. Anyway, so my fans, right? Go to the self-serve, get my fans, I scan them, and then the, the woman working at Bunnings, she, she runs up and I have this coffee cup from fucking Muffin Break, yeah? So it's just a normal cup. A normal coffee cup, it's got the Muffin Break logo on it, and it has like a little swirly bullshit corporate art design. Nothing special. And she walks up to me and she goes, oh, where did you get that cup? That's lovely. And I went, oh, I, I got it. And before I could answer, right, she picks up my cup. She picks up this woman, this stranger from Bunnings, touches my cup picks it up and my girlfriend just puts her arm on me and goes, don't. <laughs> she no, she saw that I just fucking went redlined. I was like, oh no. I Like the red mist started coming over my eyes. I was like, you Bunnings employee didn't just touch my fucking cup, did you? Right? And she picks up the cup. She starts swirling it around, putting her dirty Bunnings hands all over. I'm not, I'm not saying she's dirty because she works at Bunnings. I'm saying she's dirty because she works at Bunnings. It's fucking dirty there, right? You know? <laughs> and she starts, like, touching it with both hands, like, spinning it around, admiring the art on this fucking coffee cup. And I'm just, like... I'm redlining. I can't even... I, my I, my peripheral vision just disappeared. I can only see in pinpricks. Like, did you ever get that that talk at, in primary school where, like, a, a visually impaired guy came to your school to explain what it's like to be, uh, like, 90% blind? And then he would give you these glasses where it took out your peripheral vision and you could only see directly in front of you with two pinpricks? That's what happened to me, right? Except the only thing I could see was this fucking Bunnings stranger putting a dirty Bunnings hands all over my fucking cup that I've been putting my mouth on all day. Because she wanted to see the art. And that's when I realized art is dead. Because people from Bunnings are admiring swirly corporate bullshit muffin break Coffee cups, which is just a shit house franchise. And, uh, I don't think I've ever been that angry in my life. But of course, you know, I didn't say anything. <laughs> because I'm a pussy. But I got angry. You, you bet I ran through the conversation that I would have had in the car with my girlfriend while she said, why would you let this ruin our day? We were just buying fans from Bunnings. A woman touched your cup. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal! She touched my cup with her dirty Bunnings hands. I'm going to go back and say something. No, we should go. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
Anyway, guys, I've only got 40 minutes here on this SD card. I only had the small one with me. So I'm going to get in the miscellaneous bit at the end and then wrap this shit up uh, before it just cuts out on me. I hope it doesn't fucking cut out. <clears throat> miscellaneous bit at the end, if you don't know, is the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where, unfortunately, uh, the listeners of this shit show get to have an input. So sorry, guys, but uh, I'm about to uh, give some life advice to a bunch of uh, strangers. If you would like to send an email, if you have any life advice questions or something you'd like me to ask, answer for you, or if you have a funny story you think I would like, email me at podcast at um, and I will get back to you. Um, where are we? And uh, also, before I get into it, if you would like to support the podcast and everything that I do, consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, it's only a couple of dollars a month. There's a private uh, Discord group chat that I'm in all the time. You get early access to everything that I upload, and I'm going to start uploading behind-the-scenes content directly to that. I'm working out how to give more to all the Patreon people. You get cheaper merch and free shit and all that kind of stuff. There's different levels of it, but just Google Lewis Spears Patreon. It really does help because every episode I upload to the podcast makes it more expensive Combine that with the rent of the warehouse, I'm running myself into the ground. So your support will be greatly appreciated. If you get something out of what I do, uh, you know, it, or, or anybody else, support fucking somebody on Patreon. I just started supporting Bill Burr, who's my favorite podcast, uh, and I love the videos that he does. And uh, it, uh, you know, it felt great, you know? It was, it was really cool to do, to just fucking support someone that I get a lot out of. Because, you know, it's... Because the nature of internet content is you give it out for free... And then you just cross your fingers and hope that there's enough nice people out there that'll give something back. There's like no obligation anymore. It's like, give it to me for free and maybe I'll pay for it. So, hey, if, if, you're, the, if you're that maybe, I'd love to have you on board and you get a whole bunch of stuff in return. All right. <clears throat> oh, shit, I just checked the camera. <clears throat> We've only got four minutes. So we're going to blast through this one. Uh, I, think I, I think I screamed about that Asian dude's voice for way too long. All right. Uh, advice, looking for a relationship before joining the service. Uh, hey Lewis, I hope you're having a good one. <laughs> a good one? Who's this cunt? Uh, really loving your work and I'm happy for you that IV was such a huge success. Thank you. Uh, I need some life advice about getting into a relationship. I ended a very toxic relationship last year and I certainly feel like I've come a long way since then. I've lost about three stone in over... I don't know what that means, but I think three stone is like 10, 12 kilos or eight. I don't know. That's a lot of weight. Over six to eight months, and I'm much more athletic and confident than before. Well done, man. It's always good. Become a better person before you try and bring another person and fix yourself with someone else's bullshit. It never works. <clears throat> I'm a better person, and I've lost a lot of weight. I tried my luck on Tinder, OkCupid, and a few other apps. Bro, OkCupid? What are you, digging for 50-year-olds? Uh, with next to no results earlier in the year, I took time to focus on myself and I finally feel ready to look again. However, the problem comes as I am set to join a part of the country's armed forces next year. It is not likely that I'll get to leave until after basic or at least another year after my entry day comes. As I won't get to see family and friends for more than about six months, my chances with finding someone who can wait that long seems to me to seem slim. Seems to me to seem slim. Seems to, slim, seems slim to me to seem slim. <laughs> Should I wait until I find a job outside of my military service or date as and when I can while serving? Look forward to hearing your answers if you get round to them. Yeah, man, look, I, I feel like for you to... For you to, like, desperately try to get someone attached to you before you know you're about to leave for at least a year is a little bit selfish, man. I would... I would just fucking do, just enjoy the army, man. Enjoy the army. I don't know, I don't know what it's like being in the army. I don't know if you'll get to travel while you're training or you get to leave the base or whatever. But dude, just enjoy the army. It sounds like fucking just going to university, but yet instead of learning how to build a bridge, you're learning how to kill a man with your bare hands. Have fun, dude, while you're surrounded by the boys going, yeah, choke, 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 instead of chuck. So enjoy it, man. Um, I would just, I would just relax a little bit on it. End of the day, dude, I would treat going into the army, I feel like you would come out as like the ultimate version of yourself. Fit as fuck, disciplined as hell, and, uh, you know what real hard work is, and you'd have perspective on what a bad thing is and what a good thing is. I feel like you come back into the world 
as just a better person. Unless you, like, accidentally bombed a village full of nine-year-olds and women and children because there was one guy there, according to some information, but the information was wrong, and then the missile ricocheted and hit a village uh, and, a, and a school and a hospital next door, right? That'd fuck you up. But I feel like the training would be pretty sick. So just enjoy the training, man. Um, and, you might, I don't know, you might meet someone when you're there, or you might meet someone when you have off days, but I would say, do the training, don't worry about somebody else, find meaning from your training in the army, <clears throat> and then when you come out, when you finish, you'll be the, I feel like you should be a more fully realized version of yourself, and you'll just find someone way better because you're a better person, and you'll deserve someone better to balance it all out. So yeah, fuck that, man. Enjoy it. You don't need a girl. You're going to be surrounded by the boys fucking every day. Just do that. Pull pranks on each other and be gross cunts like you know everyone in the army is. And just have fun, man. Have fun. Work hard. You'll come out as a better person and you'll find someone better than you'd be able to find now on fucking OkCupid and Tinder. All right? That's the end of the podcast, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I'm Lewis Spears and uh, I'll talk to you next Sunday. Check me out on Patreon if you want to support what I do and get early access to everything. Uh, two of vlogs coming out. Very... You ruined the podcast. My name is Jeff.